Each quarter, we host a participant panel where past UX conference attendees can share lessons learned. Here's our panelist, Edgar Anzaldúa, a UX designer in Australia, sharing his work in our 2020 virtual participant panel. My name is Edgar. I'm uh, the head of UX design uh, at Canon Australia, and I'm also uh, uh, a UX MC from Nielsen Norman, uh, and it's really exciting. It doesn't. It doesn't uh, go away. The, the excitement from that. I want to start. Uh, my story is going to be a little bit different from Arish uh, because I, it's like a narrative over the time and the courses that I've taken. And my first conference that I attended was in uh, 2015, and these were the courses that I took. Uh, I, at the time, I was already a. a I, I've been practicing for a while and I am a, a senior UX designer working at this consultancy and I, um, the company decided that they were kind enough to pay as well for the conference. So I decided to attend. When I went to the conference, of course, there were things that I that I already knew uh, because I've been doing user experience for a little bit. But there were things that were like uh, bombs to, of knowledge, like that really came in and fill in the gap uh, of what I already knew. And up until this stage, I already I only know user experience more as a, a, a really close to interaction design, a user interface design, and not so much as a stakeholder management uh, approach. Uh, and I was been as I had been assigned to my first uh, discovery uh, project and I went to the conference and and then I saw this particular slide and I was like, oh my God, that's exactly what I need to, to do the discovery. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I took it and I kid you not, I was working with five different TV stations and I was working with a magazine and I was working with a with a new learning platform as a consultant. And I use the same template for all of them. It was really useful. Uh, this template in particular allowed me to think about how, or, or actually realize how uh, the goal for a particular project in the minds of the stakeholders, like if I was gonna meet five big stakeholders, uh, and perform a discovery exercise with them, those five different stakeholders would have different ideas of what a, the discovery, oh, sorry, of what the product had to do. And this particular template allowed me to put it in front of them and start facilitating that. And that was sort of my introduction to facilitation. It was really messy. But uh, that template made it really easy and it had a bunch of aha moments. Um, I think I can share this now because it's not really old. So I hope nobody gets upset about that. And um, and also it allowed me to, this is another slide from the same uh, year. And it allowed me to see how not only user experience could be envisioned from the beginning of the project as a set of strategies, metrics, uh, and uh, KPIs and whatnot, but also you can look at it backwards in terms uh, in terms of what the project has been performing over time. And this is uh, one of the charts that I also stole from the slide decks from back in the day. Um, after this, I got my UX certification and I was super excited. I actually bought the, 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 the exams after the fact that, that I, after I attended and and I was like, ah, oh, this was fun. I, I felt really empowered by the having the UX certified uh, aspect of uh, in my in my profile, because now I I had the authority to say that I knew about what I was talking about, which was really good. And uh, so the next year I decided to go, and the master certification was nowhere in my in my radar, but I decided to go. I only took one course, the wireframing and prototyping one. And then there was another of those aha moments, and it's um, we uh, we looked at uh, different ways in which uh, people talk about different things, and in this case, it was prototypes. And I didn't realize that prototypes have these many names. 
and that was really cool because not only knowing a few tips and tricks uh, or filling in the gap uh, of knowledge that you might have is useful, but also calling it by their name gives you like a lot of authority, which is really uh, good. And also by calling it by their name, you can actually move faster at the time of working because now everybody's, you start homogenizing the language around certain concepts and then that's really useful to get traction. This is uh, me doing, a, this is a small animation of a, a T prototype that I did in Canon just recently. And that's me in the bottom right doing the remote usability testing because hashtag thanks COVID. Uh, so we cannot do it in person, but anyway. Um, so that was 2016. And in 2017, I started shifting the, the um, my, my, my intention behind user experience. I started noticing that there was a little bit of uh, a gap that I had to fill with the management stuff. So I started adding those sort of courses and I attended the conference. Those were the courses that I took. And then something surprising happened. I started noticing that not only the first conference, I met people that were really, really, really cool to hang out with and that were really like-minded. But in the second conference that I attended, the, the same thing happened. And just to get, uh, this photo is taken in Vancouver. And I spoke to the guy in the left of the this photo this morning. So... That you make really long lasting friendships in these conferences is really cool. But anyway, that was a uh, tangent. And I guess I don't have a, like uh, a lot of examples that I can talk to, like that I can show you, but I just quickly talk to you about the significance of again talking about the concepts by their name. Feedback is something that we all deal with when we are uh, in this trade. And just by knowing how to ask for feedback, the feedback comes in completely different, which is really useful. And this is just a small nugget of um, the whole uh, world of uh, knowledge that is transmitted in these conferences, which is really cool. Here's another one from, uh, I think this is from Nancy Dickinson. And, uh, which also allowed me to learn a little bit about myself on how what is my communication style and how to talk to others when I had you have certain communication style. And lastly, um, we have the team manifesto here. Um, I have asked for uh, I have asked Sarah to to send it to me twice uh, over the course of the years because <laughs> I have the chance to apply it in in a company that I used to in California and now in in Canon. And this is the photo of the team manifesto happening in Canon. It happened at the beginning of the year and, and it really got the, uh, the team really pumped up and really uh, wanting to work together. So now I had 12 courses finished and now it, I said, I might as well just do it. So I went for the, the next year for the master certification. And again, a little bit of a mix back between research, uh, design, and management. Uh, and now the surprise that I, that I, I met Jacob, and that was, I, it was super awkward because I went to the bathroom and I just bumped into him when I was walking out of the bathroom, and I took the most horrible photo with him. But like you already seen it, so. Just to reinforce the fact, if I haven't spoken about how much you can fill in the gap when you attend these sort of um, conferences. Uh, persona, uh, doing research personas was something that uh, I always wanted to do. And I, I have really, like, I'm a data nerd. I have a, a, a bit of knowledge of how to, to code and stuff like that. And, and I also have... I'm not I'm probably not as good with the qualitative stuff, but still I sort of know my way around it. But I didn't know how to merge them both. And when I attended this conference, I had like, ha, this is how. So this is this was a slide, and I was like mind blown. Um, I won't give you the details so that you probably go to the one of the conferences. Ah. But this is how I put it in practice. So right now I'm mentoring two people um, 
into into your design and you can see it here in 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 practice this is for a uh, an evaluation we're doing of the app at space and and this one is from a uh, some research piece that i did in cars guide auto trader which was um it's a really 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 long piece of need finding and it was really 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 useful and we went from nothing from doing proto personas and sort of uh tapping on the knowledge of stakeholders to see how to create personas all the way to do the interviews and validate our uh, our beliefs about them and then create the personas. And that become master certificate certified. Yes. Um, and but I realized that I wasn't doing it for that. I was doing it because I really enjoy the people. I really enjoy the, the knowledge. I went again to the to the conference and I saw this, which is um, just a, a, a bit about facilitation on how to do perform facilitation. And as a guy that has done his fair bit of uh, workshops in the past, um, you would realize you would think that I already know how to do them. And then I went to the I saw the conference and I was like, oh my god, I have been missing this for so long. And uh, just recently in Canon, coming back from the conference, uh, I uh, I did like a, I did a meta approach like the one Arish did. And this is a, like a story map or a journey map, if you like, it's done with sticky notes, so it's not that fancy. But it's like a story map of uh, the sprint and in, within this, in this design sprint, we have all the processes that happen within that sprint, uh, the prep that you do, and the post work that you do. And in green there, you have the things that worked out. In, in red are the things that didn't work. And in purple, you have the things that we, uh, that we could do to fix the red things. And most of the, uh, a bunch of the, uh, of the things that we could do on how to fix it come from the conference, which is really, it has been really useful. So I guess that to summarize, these conferences are really good because you always get something out of it, like uh, story mapping, new ways of communicating stuff or research methods. Um, you make new friends uh, at the top left, uh, that one, Juan is also has been attending the conference as well. I met him in 2015. Uh, we reconnected just recently when I moved to Sydney, and we together we started UX Happy Hour. And uh, at the bottom right, uh, you see a photo of one of the events that we had there uh, that we have hosted. Uh, and it also helps if I haven't said it enough. It helps you join the dots. Ta-da. <laughs> so make friends, uh, learn something and join the dots. And, oh, and one more thing, I, in the last conference, I had Jacob over to my house. Yeah. <laughs> That's me. Thank you, guys. Great. Thank you so much, Edgar. Um, really funny to see that. that. Maybe you can put that back up again, that picture of Jacob on your TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you had Jacob over in your living room. That's great. Um, so yeah. thank you so much for, for sharing that. And so again, um, just like we did with the Reach, if you guys have questions, feel free to drop those in the Zoom chat. Um, but as we're waiting for those to come in, I definitely have a couple of, of questions and things I want to know more about, Edgar. It's really great to hear your experience as somebody who is in a leadership position now and you know, kind of came to a lot of these courses with more real world experience. Um, and to hear you talk about how some of these courses, you know, even, even when they didn't give you things that you didn't already know, they maybe gave you the terminology for those things, or they helped you connect the dots between things that you had kind of learned on your own. Um, and I loved what you said about that, also lending authority and sort of enabling you to standardize language with the teams that, that you worked with. Um, you know, things like calling it a, a T prototype. Um, mm -hmm. 
I wonder if you faced any resistance while you were trying to sort of establish those norms. Like, did you find any challenges in trying to get that terminology to be consistent? In my last, in Canon uh, right now, there's a thousand different ways that people refer uh, to a, a high fidelity wireframe. I call it high fidelity wireframe. Another, some other guys call it wire. Some other guys call it call it uh, comps. And we don't have like it's it's always different from company to company uh, how they call things. And mm-hmm. so standardizing it. Sometimes I feel like a like a dictator if I just come in and then I uh, tell this is the way we're gonna name things. So I instead of doing that, I try to adapt to their language for a little bit and. Um, and then I uh, I try to start like pushing as much as I can in a soft way. I'm trying not to be not too pushy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, but sometimes I just end up adopting what they call it because they already yeah they are using it already and it's working. So why would mm-hmm. I change it? That's something that Jacob's Sorry. been talking a lot about recently. This idea of vocabulary inflation within the UX field mm-hmm. and how there's all these different terms that you can use to refer to the same concept. But that's a great tip that you, you know, you may want to sort of soften your approach in some ways and not, you know, declare that this is what we're going to call these things. You know, it probably doesn't matter too much in a lot of situations as long as you're consistent. So that's a great, it's a great yeah. tip that you can just try to adapt to whoever you're working with. Yeah. Um, Sarah has a question for you, Edgar. She says, what's one piece of advice you have for someone who's newer to the UX field and trying to establish themselves in the field? So somebody who's maybe a complete newbie. I guess uh, I remain curious. Uh, I guess that I, I mentioned at the beginning of the of the presentation that I, I've been doing UX. The first time I went to the conference, I was already with a title that had UX in it, like for three, four years. So when I when I went to the conference, I felt a little bit like, how do we know this, you know? And and it, it humbled me to, to realize that I didn't know this, you know? There, there was a lot of stuff that I didn't know. And uh, so keep an open mind and keep learning. That would be um, how, how to tackle the the, remain curious how to go from from nothing or from a junior to 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 something more senior yeah yeah that's a great tip not only for for new people but anybody at any phase in their ux career and that's so true that you know just like any product or service that we're working on there's always room for improvement it's we're never like okay now it's done now it's perfect i feel like mm-hmm. the same thing's true for us as professionals like for us, never, yeah. like okay, you know, now I know all the UX things and there's nothing new mm-hmm. for me to, to learn. That's a great tip. 